Lifting your Toyota Tacoma? Beware. Good morning, everybody. How are you today? Pretty good here, and that's right. If you're lifting your Toyota Tacoma, then you need to be aware of a few things. You know, first of all, is the cost. You know, you can spend a fortune lifting your Toyota Tacoma if you want to, and that's the key. Make sure that you know or decide what you want out of your Toyota Tacoma, right? I mean, if you're gonna be an extreme, heavy-duty off-roader, then you probably need to set your truck up in a manner that's gonna accommodate that. Because if you don't, you're gonna be putting a different lift on. It's gonna cost you more money. But if you're not gonna be doing that, and let's face it, in all reality, 96% of 4x4 owners never go off-road. Their trucks never see any dirt. So keep that in mind. While you may want to set it up to be the off, most off-road capable truck that's ever been created, are you really going to use it for that? Do you need to spend the thousands and thousands of dollars setting it up that way? Maybe not. Maybe it's just for aesthetics. Secondly, comfort. You know, it's funny. I, I hear from people out there that try to tell me that it made no difference. They lifted their truck and it made absolutely no difference. Now, there is one caveat to this and I'd say that might be true if you didn't change your tire setup. Because it's not really the lift altogether that changes the ride quality. You are going to have a little bit stiffer lift. I mean, it makes sense, right? If you're compressing the shocks, compressing the springs, your truck is gonna ride a little bit firmer than it did before. But once you throw those bigger, meatier, more aggressive tires on there, especially if you reduce the sidewall, you know, go with a 20 inch, like I made the mistake of doing, it's gonna make a big difference. That truck is gonna feel everything on the road. And it's, it's not pleasant, let's be honest. Next is rub, you know, this isn't really a factor of the lift, I don't think. But as I've mentioned in the past, most people, I would say 99.9%, .9 are gonna change out the tires when they go to a lift, right? They're gonna put something bigger and more aggressive on there, something meatier, because you have to. I mean, there's nothing worse than seeing a lifted truck that has those little dinky donut looking tires on it, right? You've probably seen them. It doesn't look good. You won't be happy with it. And sooner or later, you're gonna put bigger tires on there. And you have to be concerned as to whether or not the lift that you've already done is going to accommodate that. You know, I've heard stories, people that have had their trucks lifted, gone in, went to put newer, bigger tires on, and they don't fit. They rub like crazy. So they have to go with something else. In other words, they have to settle, right? Because obviously when you were first planning and setting the truck up, you had an idea of what you wanted, right? The look that you were trying to achieve or the functionality that you needed. But it's gonna change if you don't account for that when you do your lift. Make sure that the lift that you're putting on is gonna accommodate the setup that you want. It has to be very disappointing when you're at the tire shop or you get that phone call that says, hey, you know, Fred, uh, your tires are rubbing. You're either gonna have to go with a different lift, which is now gonna cost you twice as much money, or take a loss on those tires that you bought because they just don't fit. Maybe you got lucky enough to buy those tires from the place that you're having it lifted at, which I would highly advise, by the way, because at least if you do that and there's a problem, you should be able to swap them out with something else at that shop, or at least return them at no cost to you to go with something that's gonna work. So just be aware of that. Tire rub. 
Nothing worse than that, and you shouldn't have to live with that if everything is set up correctly. Now this one, I don't think a lot of people think about, but it's garage fit, right? If you keep your truck in your garage, you have to be able to clear the door, right? I mean, it has to fit. And I've seen, I don't know how many times, and this is more people buying full-size trucks than lifts, but I've seen people go out, buy brand new full-size trucks, bring them home, and they're parked out in their driveway when they always park in their garage. The reason for that is they didn't check. And I know because people have told me they didn't check. They got home, pulled their truck in their garage, and it doesn't fit. Well, the same thing is true for a lift, depending on how high you go and how much clearance you have on your garage door opening, right? I mean, if you pull that truck in and you hear a scrape as you're entering your garage, you have a problem, a bigger problem than just comfort with a lift, right? So make sure that you measure, make sure that you know what you're doing, especially if you're going with a lift that's more extreme, you know, anything above probably a three or four inch lift and you're going to have to start to think about whether or not it's going to fit in your garage. Make sure you check. Last up, and this is a big one, bad advice. I see this on the web all the time. People get on and they don't know what they're talking about and they try to tell other people what they should be doing, right? And don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to tell you what you should do. I'm just trying to tell you what to be aware of. But I've had other people get on there and they will speak like it's gospel, like they know it all, right? They'll tell you that you've got to have these tires, you've got to replace the UCAs, the leaf springs, the shocks, the coils. They'll have you spending $10,000 before you're done. And there's a reason for this. You know, I think there are a lot of people out there that don't do their homework, go ahead and have the lift done and then they're disappointed. And you know, misery loves company, right? There's nothing that makes some people feel better than having other people experience the same misfortune that they've experienced. So take advice out there with a grain of salt. If somebody's telling you you need to do all kinds of different things if you're gonna lift your truck, and it seems a bit extreme, it probably is. It's probably because they've made that mistake and now they're just trying to feel better by having you make that mistake. Now, one more little thing I wanted to mention, the shop that you're gonna go to. Hey, we have a bee here joining us. Hope it doesn't sting me, ah, it just flew away. I don't like bees. Uh, but anyway, the shop that you're going to, make sure that you do a little bit of research about the shop. You know, these days, online is all kinds of information, and typically the shops themselves will have a section for reviews. And strangely enough, I find, which is good for us, that these shops do publish the good and the bad. So you can kind of get them an, an idea of what the shop is like. You know, particularly how they treat their customers. You know, I had noticed a while back, I was researching a shop and they had a customer that was unhappy. And just the tone that I got from the responses from the shop towards that customer, led me to the decision that I wouldn't want to deal with that shop because frankly, I didn't like the way they were reacting or responding to the people that were having problems. Now that's not to say that there aren't unreasonable people out there, of course there are. But no matter what, the customer is always right, even when they're wrong, and it's how you treat them. Anyway, just kind of wanted to get on here and uh, give you guys a few things to be aware of if you're lifting your Toyota Tacoma so that you're not surprised or make mistakes and spend a ton of money when you're doing it. Leave a comment, let me know if you've run into any of this kind of stuff. I'd be curious to know. Also, real quick, if you're interested, check out my other channel. It is Rob Motive JT, all about my 2020 Jeep Gladiator sitting out there. Don't forget to click that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. And do me a favor, smash that subscribe button on the way out. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.